Tennessee, where uh, a lot of people are filling the Capitol building in that state's capital, uh, protesting what they say are uh, a lack of efforts to control guns and the expulsion of a couple of Democrats that uh, helped lead this group of protesters to the state capitol. Uh, listen, there are people who are saying that this was an insurrection, uh, that uh, they needed to expel these Democrats because they uh, broke the rules and allowed for discord in the chambers. Uh, we've been hearing a lot about this, but yesterday they actually took some action and expelled these members. Uh, this is uh, Justin Jones, one of the expelled members uh, before, and he's on the uh, floor of the Tennessee legislature, uh, pointing at people he says have done worse things than what he's accused of doing. Dan go. He's taking a drink. Let's talk about expulsion. Let's talk about expulsion. For years, one of your colleagues years, who was an admitted child molester sat in this child chamber. Child in this chamber. No expulsion. No expulsion. One one member sits one member in this sits chamber, in chamber who was found guilty found of domestic, domestic violence. violence. No, no expulsion. expulsion. We had a former speaker sit in this chamber who is now under federal investigation. No expulsion. We have a member still under federal investigation. No expulsion. We had a member pee in another member's chair in this chamber. No expulsion. In fact, they're in leadership. But in the, in the governor's administration. And so once again, what you're saying to us, since you're trying to put us on trial, I'll say what you're really putting on trial is the state of Tennessee. What you're really showing for the world is holding up a mirror to a state that is going back to some dark, dark roots, a state in which the Ku Klux Klan was founded is now attempting another power grab by silencing the two youngest black representatives and one of the only women, Democratic women in this body. That's what this is about. So, uh, again, just one of the members of the Tennessee legislature being expelled. Uh, the other one, uh, having his voice heard as well on CNN, talks about what he thinks the issues are. Uh, here is uh, that member uh, discussing how he feels they're being discriminated against. This is uh, uh, Justin Pearson. We came here to lift up the issues of people who are suffering. Six people died in Nashville at the Covenant School. Three were nine years old, but instead of focusing on that, Representative Jones, Representative Johnson, and myself are being expelled from the State House because we said we cannot do business as usual. No one should be wanting to operate as though this is not happening, as though we are not living in a gun violence epidemic in the state of Tennessee. And the solutions that are being offered is actually to reduce the First Amendment rights of people who speak up on behalf of their constituencies, who speak up on behalf of people who are tired of the guns, who are tired of seeing legislation being passed that lowers the age for you to carry, tired of seeing legislation being passed that says you don't need a permit, tired of legislation being passed that says if we give teachers guns, that's somehow going to fix the problem. People are tired of these non-real solutions to a real problem that we are suffering from. Again, others would say uh, the non-real solutions Solutions are to go and restrict law-abiding gun owners' access to firearms. And that's what you see uh, being uh, proposed in, in at least what they want to have happen. That's not happening in Tennessee. Love to hear from you. 217-629-7970. That's the phone number again. 217-629-7970. Uh, some other things that uh, came out yesterday on the uh, on the floor of the legislature. This is uh, State Representative Sabi Doc Kumar uh, blasting his uh, former colleague who got uh, expelled uh, saying how they made racist comments towards this individual. Uh, here's how that debate played out. In those 53 years in America, I have never encountered a racial slur. I'm really not aware that any of that applies to me. I live a good life. Yet, you on tape call me a brown face. Yes, sir, it's on tape. And what, and what I told you was what you just exhibited 
as the only member of their caucus who is not of the Caucasian persuasion, I said that you put a brown face on white supremacy. That's what All I right. said. That in itself is really derogatory. You put a brown face on white supremacy and obviously Representative Sabi Kumar uh, taking exception to that. Uh, but the legislature did go ahead and they expelled uh, two of the three members. The third one was a nice. white woman. Uh, who later told uh, a crowd that she feels that uh, that was done because she's white and the other two are black. You, I will answer your question. It might have to do with the color of our skin. So again, uh, th th this is somehow going from talking about uh, the Second Amendment rights to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed to then being turned into racism. Uh, but if you look at some of the history of gun laws in the United States, they really started in a way of limiting minority populations from having access to guns. And if you research, you know, the beginning of the National Rifle Association, there was a lot of focus on ensuring that, uh, you know, African-Americans in this country had a Second Amendment right as well. Uh, so there's uh, some some interesting things going on, and uh, we got to keep a close eye on it um, as the debate about access to firearms and who's going to drive that conversation is going to be a bunch of uh, 15, 16, 17, 17 year olds who have virtually no life experience, who've really just been in front of uh, what people could characterize as propaganda, uh, or is it uh, going to be driven by people who understand the text and tradition of this country and why the Second Amendment is so important? Uh, let's take a quick call. Good morning. You're on WMAY. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, Greg. You said 15, 16, 17 year olds with no life experience. I think their entire life they've experienced lockdowns, school shootings. I think they've got a little bit of experience. Uh, when it comes to the national, the NRA, remember that picture of the Black Panthers on the uh, courthouse steps and was it San Francisco? And that was the end of that. Nope, no more open carry. Yeah, black people with guns in public, they got rid of that real quick. So you are correct. That is where that started. Uh, back to Tennessee, that's a private school. Those teachers had a right to carry. Where were all the good people with guns? Well, police stepped in quickly without hesitation, uh, no, no, as, no, as we saw the hesitation. No, I, I understand that, and, 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 and that's fine. You can victim blame. That's fine. Uh, but the police I'm stepped in. And, and I'm saying there are teachers there with guns. Where were their six shooters? Why weren't they boom, boom? They're there. They had them. We were told that stops school shootings. It teachers sounds like guns. you're victim blaming. I'm saying there's teachers with guns. Where were they at? At that school, I don't know the the status yes, of the teachers who had guns carry. and didn't no have one guns. Said where they were, they will not respond on where those people were. Again, I heard they weren't there that day. Why did that person well, go into the, the school? Well, the real question should be: Why did that person go into the school with with firearms? Absolutely. Whenever that's that's they the real do, question. You're, that's you're that. You, but, but, you seem, but you seem. But you seem to guns. be. But you seem to be wanting to just you know turn it around and blame the victims. Well, I'd like to know where the people were with guns because you've the told police, me on air. The police that came in and took the, so uh, the suspect out. Where were they? The police where came in they? and took the suspect out. Okay, but the teachers there with guns, do they hide? I don't know the status of the teachers there. who had firearms in that school. But well, again, I, didn't, I understand you want to switch the conversation to somehow, you know, uh, uh, blame victims, but we'll just leave it there. I want to get more of your phone calls coming up next here on WMAY, all right? I want to get your phone calls to what's going on down in Tennessee and the overall conversation about guns and gun control efforts and the chaos that erupted in Tennessee with uh, two lawmakers being expelled from the legislature after they helped lead uh, the the uh, protesters outside the Tennessee Capitol and inside the Tennessee Capitol and even inside the chambers uh, where there's supposed to be some decorum, but things erupted and others essentially equating it to an insurrection. Uh, but uh, regardless, uh, the, the debate about guns definitely gets pretty passionate. And uh, previous caller, um, you know, said these kids that are there, 15, 16, 17 years old or so, uh, they have a lot of life experience uh, because, you know, they have to do code red drills of a shooter in a school with a gun and so on. And and that can't be, you know, uh, denied. Uh, absolutely. I'm from a generation where I experienced my first code red drill in my uh, senior year of high school. Uh, and uh, it was it was bizarre. But regardless, uh, that does not negate, people argue, the Second Amendment. 
A well-regulated militia being necessary for the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Now, the response is, well, why didn't the teachers who had guns stop that Nashville shooter? That's the wrong question to ask. The, the real question to ask is, why did that shooter go into that school in Nashville? And that shooter was ultimately killed by police after killing three young children and three teachers. Uh, that individual shot and killed by police. But we've got this headline uh, from the Epic Times out of Colorado Springs. A man who identifies as a woman arrested for allegedly plotting a school shooting in Colorado. Charges have been filed against a man who identifies a woman after he allegedly planned to carry out mass shootings attacks on multiple schools in Colorado Springs, according to the 18th Judicial District Attorney's Office. William Whitworth, 19, charged on April 6 following an investigation into threats involving the schools in Colorado Springs Academy, District 20. Whitworth, uh, who told police he identifies as Lily, has been charged with two counts of criminal attempt to commit murder in the first degree, one count of criminal mischief, one count of menacing, and one count of interference with staff, faculty, and students of an educational institution. Uh, These are obviously serious charges, but what's going on here? Uh, Should we, instead of looking at the tool used to inflict harm should we instead look at the individuals looking to commit harm um somebody uh yesterday on the on the youtube stream said that uh you know uh when when cain killed abel with a rock god didn't punish the rock he looked at the person who had the intent so uh let's get to your calls 217-629-7970 good morning you're on wmay made a really good point there I appreciate that you, you uh, uh, especially how you did that. Uh, but my, my uh, comment is uh, towards your uh, co-worker, Frank McNeil. He uh, said last night that he implied they were gerrymandering the districts in Tennessee and that this was the removal of these people, of these uh, senators or representatives, was politically motivated. We don't know that yet. And talk about gerrymandering. Illinois has more gerrymandering most states, I would say, in that they want the Democrats in power because it only takes, like, four uh, counties to elect a... uh, Governor? Yeah, gerrymandering definitely is a, a problem. Both sides do do it, but Illinois in particular has been cited by national groups as having some of the worst gerrymandered districts, uh, and you can see how that can play into politics, but I appreciate the call. 217-629-7970 is the number you can always chime in live. 